Yes, we can. Um, so, you know, today uh, I plan to talk a little bit about uh, turning his with the lower body and ski design. And the reason I think I go in these blocks, um, you know, last one was about dynamic balance, which, uh, you know, f for, for this group, I, I try to stick with the the CSI's manual and the way of thinking of it. And when we, when we talk about sports in general, uh, most, most athletic endeavors break uh, skiing down into skills um, or, or key, key movement patterns. And that's what I have done here. And I think if you try to talk to different nations, they talk very similar. They might use different words uh, to, to describe it, but those definitions of those words would lead to the same movement patterns. Um, in, in skiing, uh, and for, for this group here, these, these webinars are good in helping you understand, and, and the more you kind of talk about it and hear it, that helps you understand it, and then that helps the brain uh, take those that understanding and make it into movement patterns on the snow. Um, also with the videos that you watch and hopefully you watch a lot more than what I show you. There's a, there's a lot out there that are, are quite good. That helps you see it as well. And seeing it and copying it also helps to learn. It helps the eye as well. When you, when you go to teaching, I know that, um, you know, like Vivi is, is working on uh, the teaching component of it too. And I believe that that's really a part that we have to, to work on is to, to get comfortable analyzing skiers and get, getting confident and saying, okay, this is the movement that they're, they're not making. Today, I'll, I'll try to um, dig into the turning to the lower body. But what we have to remember is when people learn uh, whether it's you that's learning that movement or whether it's uh, one of our students learning that movement, we need to keep it simple. And that's all it is. And, and if, we, if we show them what it looks like and when it occurs, we've, done, we've really done our job. Okay. Now, the, the, one, <clears throat> the one thing I know that this group is really keen on is, is understanding it, seeing it, having lectures, understanding the... <clears throat> the minutia, which is the, re the really the fine detail of what the movement is. Um, and when I teach, I don't really get too deep beneath the layers because that only, you can only really get there when you start to feel some of the things. And that comes from miles and experiences. And so one of my messages for this group is uh, to get better at skiing, you have to ski. To get great at skiing, you've got to ski lots. And you've got to experience those, those um, different snow conditions. Uh, so, you know, whether it's bump or ice or slush or powder, get in them and ski them. And I know, I know that one of the funny things is, is when we get to this time of the year often, in most typical years, people stop skiing because all the snow is slushy or it's icy in the morning. Well, those things are great for those experiences that, that we can do. Um, so it's not only, not only the snow conditions, but all, also the different pieces of terrain. So when we, when we talk about turning with the lower body, turning with the lower body seems like a simple action, but once you start to put it in these different terrain situations, and different turn shapes and different snow conditions, the complexity gets difficult. It's the same action, but the timing and how it feels and how much you do changes. And you, I can tell you what happens. We're still turning our leg. It's more or less. It's sooner or later. It's quicker, it's up. But to get it right, has to come from you, the skier. You have to go out and experience, experience it and, and learn from which movement worked better than the other movement, right? We, we try to point you, as a teacher, we try to point our students in the avenue that's correct. But in a sport like skiing, 
um, it's something we call a decision making sport. You are constantly making decisions. Now, you can't constantly make decisions and, 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 and be cerebral about it when you're out in the snow because you don't have time with every turn going, okay, let's see, it's a little steeper here, the snow conditions are a little rough, that turn's gone. You know, that, so the, the decision has to come from experience and what we call rote, which is uh, happens immediately. You know, it's, it's like uh, an old dial up um, internet line versus, you know, high speed flash drive where the decision uh, comes right away. Your, your brain can't be using dial up. Your brain has to be using the flash drive where it immediately pulls out that information and then, and then creates that uh, quick response. That's on the skiing side of it. Then on the teaching side of it, the same thing has to happen. And whether you're aiming to get your level three teaching or your level four teaching, watching good skiers, I, I, like I'm going to show you some videos and, and learning what they do. And, and it, I want you to try to simplify the teaching thing and, and, and not try to over complicate it. When I watch a skier, the majority of the problems are they're not balanced correctly in all situations. And then they, they can't turn with the lower body. And if they can't turn with the lower body, then they can't create separation to, to get angulation and edge. And we want a lot of us, especially love carving or need to control our speed at the end of a turn in a mogul run. And if we don't have separation and we're not in balance, we're not going to be able to manage our speed. So the, the importance I think in the manuals of, of balance and turning the lower body are a couple of the, the really big nuts to crack that allow you to do those other things. Okay. So it's kind of, it's kind of layered. I have to, I have to be well balanced in a dynamic fashion when I'm skiing moguls or short turns or quick, then I can add in that layer of turning with the lower body precisely. The better skier you are, the more precise your movement pattern is, the more refined it is, the more detailed it is. And it's appropriate for the snow conditions and the terrain. Okay. So that's it. Now, when we teach, it's the same thing. I, I have, when I look at a skier, I, I, I understand the minutia of skiing, but I just teach with kind of the big pieces. What's the snow conditions? What's the terrain? What's the mentality of the skier in front of me? And then I, I, you know, I look at balance. Are, are they smooth? Are they balanced the whole time? Can they turn to the lower body? Uh, okay. And if they, if, they, if they are doing it perfectly, then I'm going to create a situation where it's more challenging or more difficult. Okay. And often what I see in a level two, three course or a level four course in an exam situation is the teacher doesn't challenge the students in a strong enough fashion where, where their skills are, are challenged, are stressed. Okay, so when you learn, if, uh, um, if I took this group out and we uh, skied um, a really nice, easy green, blue run all day long, you'd be bored. And I would try to refine your skills. But if I take you to a steeper run or a powder run, and I challenge you in situations where you're, you're a little uncomfortable, but you're learning something, it's more fun. And your skills are, are learning. Sometimes we'll go to the flatter run and we'll, we'll work on it a little bit more. Okay. So, so um, that's it. Now, when it, when it comes to, uh, you know, so teaching and skiing, skiing, you've got to feel it. Teaching, you also got to, got to kind of get a sense of feeling it as well, feeling if it's working or if it's not working and get comfortable with it. It takes, it takes a lot of, uh, a lot of practice, right? And, and teaching is great for our ski improvement, believe it or not. All right. So turning with the lower body, what, what that means. And I think this is, um, a big thing. Um, 
when, when I watch a skier and I watch the lower body, so I watch the legs, the legs turn in the hip sockets. Uh, the legs lead the turning effort all the time. They are turning more than the upper body and it, and it uh, really doesn't matter the turn. Now, powder might, big powder might be a little bit different. There's a, there's a bit of an up, but the legs are still working. And when we talk about ski design, the ski design assists the legs in turning. It's not the, the, it's not the skis doing the turning and the, and the body going with it. The skis assist in turning the lower body. How we stand on them, <clears throat> how we, you know, we, 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 tur we turn them a little bit and we edge them a little bit. And through that process, more or less, depending on the snow conditions, they're going to they're gonna turn upper, upper body. Okay. Now, there's kind of um, four different segments in the turn with, with lower body and it's slightly different. If I look at the crossover from, from one turn to the next, and you can, you can craft it any way you want. Cross over, cross under, cross middle, doesn't matter, right? The, the, the base of support, the center of mass are going in, in different directions. I, I personally tend to think of the feet anchored on the snow, so the body then passes over, but the feet, the feet um, using centripetal force uh, from the ground, you know, and, and muscular movements helps direct the center of mass. But that's the, the way I tend to look at it, but it doesn't matter, they, they go over. So at the crossover, <clears throat> what we've got is we've got our skis turned one way and they finished, they're flat, they have to be flat on the snow, right? Or uh, slightly, sometimes all, they're almost elevated in the air and they start to turn the other way. And if you look in, um, if you look in the manual, if you look in this manual, and I look at page 6.4, and I circled it here, 6.4, and I look at it here, this skier here, uh, this is the middle part of the turn, and you'll notice the skis are off the ground, okay? So, um, not, not often, you know, do we have to, in slalom skiers like that, not often do we make an arc in the snow, but there will be an arc in the air, okay? Um, so the, the skis are going from one way and they start to go another way. But what, what happens is just immediately right after that, the, the body as a rule faces the direction of travel. So I'll say that again, the body as a rule faces the direction of travel. In a big turn, it's more to the side. In the short turn, you know, it's to the center of the next turn or a medium turn. And in a fall line, short radius turn or bumps, it's straight down. So the top portion of the turn, the body is facing down the hill and the skis are facing off to the side. And that may be a more or less so this is what I call um, unwinding, this un unwinding part. And it's where the skis, the, the, the legs, skis and legs are turned, and now they are going to line up with the body. Okay? And that, that, if it's a larger turn, has the assistance of ski design. If it's uh, uh, early arc in the air, the body just naturally wants to align, or if it's a short turn or bumps, often the skis don't have a lot of pressure, and the upper body and the legs like to be aligned. So it's so it's a quite easy process where the skis now align. Then, um, depending upon the phase after that, in a larger turn and a higher performance turn, this becomes earlier, almost, and it can be up in the top third of the turn. In a shorter turn or turn with less performance, it comes a little bit later, almost a fall line. And that's where we start to wind the skis up or, or we, start, we start to create um, a, a separation or a turning angle, right? So in a big turn, that can start early 
in a short turn it starts a little bit later where i create a, a greater steering angle and i and i turn them in a in a big turn i turn my skis a little bit in a short turn i turn my skis a lot and this is a skill set that good skiers should have good skiers should be able to in different situations different snow conditions have the ability to turn the skis a little bit right or medium or or a lot and turning with the lower body i'm turning the, turning the legs is using the adductor muscles on the inside there's not a lot of feeling in there in the hips right unless unless you've got arthritis or something else you don't know if it's gonna turn or, or uh, hurt but um, i believe that not many sports teach us how to turn our legs and so it's something that we need to train and you can train there standing on one foot turning your your feet like this and turning your other foot or turning trying to face straight straight ahead with it all joined slightly and, tr and trying to learn how to turn your legs and doing it slow and quick but sometimes the the movement is rather jerky and what we want to do is we want to be able to have fine motor movements and that comes from training and that's something you can do at home you can lay on your back and you can put your feet up in the air and you can turn them slowly and, and you can learn and you can try to feel often when we when we're skiing and we turn our turn our legs we feel it in our feet in our boots it's not where it's occurring but it's where we can feel some pressure changes because of the 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 massive amount of nerves in, in our feet we can feel those change a lot okay so some, something to, to try at home or you can stand there and you can kind of twist twist your foot put your foot on the floor and try and, and, and twist it and you'll feel the the nerves on your end feeling that force which is coming from upper part of your leg um, now i want to make sure that when we when we talk about turning with the lower body we are turning the leg and the axis of the leg comes out through the back of the arch or the foot. That's the, that's the axis. Like I turn this, this pencil, it's right through the middle, but our leg is slightly bent. So it's off a little bit, but I don't want to get confused a little bit. And I think in, in, in the manual science of skiing and on page 14, we start to uh, get a little bit of, of challenge here where it talks about when the legs are bent, when we turn the leg, it creates edging. Well, maybe it does, yes and no, but it's in combination. And I separate uh, inclination and angulation as an edging component. And, and when I turn the legs and I look at the video there, or the, the picture, the second picture here, it shows slight angulation. And when I see slight angulation, that, puts me in the realm of of the next one where i have separation i turn to the lower body and then because of the speed i can go and get a little bit of edging but in realistic fashion it's just turning the lower body and that's what we want to try to focus on and i don't want to get it mixed up if i try to turn my leg and drive my knee in then what happens is i'm locked on the front of the boot and i cause rotation if i try to use uh, more of the ski design to try and turn my legs by pushing my knee or try to try to create it artificially that leads to rotation and rotation I, I i define rotation as the upper body leading the turning effort right it starts from an imbalance and a drive to get um, early edge and early edge is not always required okay we need minimal amount of edge we have as we finish a turn we have gravity pulling us down the hill and gravity pulls us and i just need to turn my legs and i'm going to have that arc i don't need to force a lot of edging i don't need a lot of edging to create that early arc right i just need a slight little bit of inclination and then i can go all right but i'm getting a bit sidetracked into the edging phase but it's when we talk about skiing none of them None of the components of skiing are isolated unto themselves. Although I try to do that, and when we teach, we try to do that. We have to understand the implications when we teach of, wow, if I'm off balance, if I try to get some edging, well, then I can't turn with the lower body. 
the turning of the lower body needs to be clean. It needs to be pure. Uh, and it needs to be precise for the actions, uh, snow conditions and, and so forth that I'm, that I'm going with, all right? Um, so the bottom part of the turn now, I'm, I'm winding up. Then just before the, the fall line, there's a, there's a release. So as I turn and I move, I move my edges. Now I'm going to release the edging and go to the flat spot. And basically that's all it is. It's just a, it's just a, oh, I decided that I'm going to release. We don't talk about that much. And there's really not a lot of the turning the lower body component left. At that point, after I've finished edging and I completed my turn, and I'm going to the, the neutral spot of the crossover, I've stopped turning my legs and I've stopped edging and I've just let my mask come over top. Then I'm going to start going the other way. So those are, those are kind of the components and that's way more detail than I, than I talk about. I usually talk about starting the turn, turning my legs, right? Being balanced so that I can turn my legs, start, turn them, continue to steer them so that I can create separation so that I can edge, so that I can carve or get grip or slow down. Okay. Now, a um, couple of videos quickly because let's see if I can do this, Lynn. CD. Oh. I want to, I'm sure you can do it. Let's see. Uh, share screen. Share screen. Okay. Oh, let's see. Uh, Where are you? You've gone. Share. Here we go. Uh, no. Let's see. Stop share. Let's see if I can do that again here. Share screen. There we go here. Uh, okay. Now you've got that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This was done a couple of years ago. Okay, so right here, <clears throat> uh, if you look, the skis are, you know, if, I, and if, I'm, if I'm training my eye, um, for you guys, like I'm balanced in the middle of the, my foot. Um, let's see, balanced, and if you look at it, it's right about here or there on the new ski, because I've just started to cross over. So you see that? So that's about where my balance point is. Okay, all right. It's gone, it's gone from, gone from my right foot to my left foot as I, as I make my turn. Now, it's just, and this again is for your eye, it's just past the crossover. Because if you look at my ski here, there's just a little bit of an angle, right? So um, I'm, I'm not a big component of trying to get early edge, but I am, I am I'm, I'm actually cheating here a little bit because you can see my body is like this, right? So I'm, I'm moving, moving across. But more important, um, uh, what I want to do is I want to say, okay, my body right, is facing, let's see where it is, text, uh, text, uh, stamp. My body is facing now, so my body is facing this direction here, right? Could draw that, and my skis. Are, drawn, are, are going this way. So this is that top part of the turn. So in the last 
section of the turn I've wound up. And now I'm going to unwind. Okay. See you go back just a little bit more. Okay, so now, so you can see the difference before. And this is the same term. This is that same term. And now we can look at this is the, the different phase in the turn, right? So if I go here, now my body is, is aligned probably a little bit more like this. And my skis are like this, okay? So my skis actually probably turn just a little bit more across the body. So now I've created upper and lower body separation and I've created a steering angle. See the, see the slight difference? And I'm just coming into the fall line. Okay, now, now, if we look at it, okay, my body's facing this way and my skis are facing this way. Okay. All right, so now they're starting to wind up. I'm still, I'm still pretty, pretty tall here, right? You can start to see angulation a little bit. Okay, this part of the turn, even though I'm not talking about it, but because I've created separation, that's allowed that to start to occur. Okay. So hard, hard to see here, but there's even, even more wound up. And because, because you start to get separation again, uh, right, you get, and it's hard from this perspective, but you start to see more of a, a curve in the body here. Okay. And if your eyes are really good, this is not good, right? You see the little amount of lead change I have a little bit off on that turn. Okay, so let's just watch a few. Up. So the end part of the turn, we see the separation. The end part of the turn, we see the separation. We see as the turn comes towards us, we see more of angulation, right? So here, let's look at the top as a crossover here. The skis are flat on the snow. We don't see the black part. And then we see the skis catch up and then we see the skis pass. Start, start of the turn again, right here. Cross skis are flat. They catch up with the body. It's just top part of the turn again. Just watch the top part of the turn right here. I go across, turn, and the body's ahead facing, and now the skis catch up and continue to turn, right? So now, now just if you watch in two different segments, I'm going to get everybody just to watch in two different segments here, okay? If you, if you watch just upper and lower body, right? So, and then sometimes the lower body is hard to see, but if you look at the skis, you'll see the skis turning a lot relative to the upper body, right? Skis turning a lot to the relative to the upper body. Okay. Skis turning a lot and they're continuous turning, right? The skis, right? The skis are turning. The, the upper body is not leading the turning effort in any way. It's always just the, the lower body leading that turning effort. Okay. Let's 
here in slow motion. It's just, this is an, a, an intermediate parallel for a level four ski off. All right, this is just what we want to see, just kind of nice and smooth. You know, I can bring the shoulders a little bit more over top of my knees, but you know, well, well balanced. We talked about that in the last turn here, not a lot of lead change, the body turning smoothly. Okay. Pretty, pretty straightforward. And there's a short clip of some short turns here. And I think it's just good to see the, the lower body turning, right? So in a short turn in, in contrast, Skis are wound up at the end of the turn, right? Now, now the skis are catching. Okay, so here, this is the top part of the turn and I'm, and I'm almost in the fall line here and the body is facing straight down the, the, the turn and I've started to turn my legs, right? And the, the skis are catching up or they're what I call the unwinding phase. Right. Now they're, this is, they, they've released and they're just about, I'm just about to cross over. You can see they're not hundred percent flat, but they're very close. Right. And again, if I'm, if I'm going to draw the balance point, right, was here and now it's switching to there on, on this leg. Okay, so it's switching, switching from my right to my left right away. And you can see the skis are going off in this direction and the body is facing towards us here. Okay, skis are going, going that way. Okay, let me just uh, find one more. Okay, got one more to share with you here, sorry. And then this will be our last one. Okay, so here he's, uh, Richie has just, uh, if, if, we, if we look at, his skis again, he's, he's pretty much, the skis are flat, he's at the crossover. But if you look at his body, okay, it's coming this way and the skis are going this way. All right, so he's wound up 
and he's he's going to unwind. Oh, I guess he doesn't like it when I draw on it. having technical difficulties then. There we Okay, so here, <clears throat> um, sorry, I can't, bigger, richer is, you know, one of the things he's trying to do here is he is trying to get a lot of uh, edging early, right? Um, and it's the type of turn he's making, <clears throat> but you can still see he's facing us. And this is in the top portion of the turn. And <clears throat> he can get away with creating that, the knee moving in <clears throat> because of the shape of his skis and because of the snow conditions. Okay. So they're winding up again, All right? <clears throat> okay. Now, <clears throat> now Rich, Richie has created, uh, so the, the, bod, the body, is now coming towards us here while the skis are going across this way. So now he's wound up a little bit. Okay. So again, watch, watch if um, this segment, this short turn segment, it's really easy because in a, in a short turn, turn segment, the, the amount the legs turn relative to the upper body is a lot. So it makes it very clear. And sometimes when you're, when you're teaching, I think short turns are, are good because um, the balance point has to move quickly and uh, the, the skis turn a lot. So there's a lot, a lot to work with and you're putting the skier under pressure. So from a, from a perspective of, of visuals and watching, it's easy to see. You know, the other thing here, you can see one foot slightly behind. Okay, so just watching this segment. See how much he turns his leg and the upper body is straight forward. This next segment, watch, just watch, try to, try to the two, two areas we saw, just for your eye. For some reason it's not liking this. Watch the, the, the two sections, the bottom, right? And so it's a little slower, medium sized turn. And you can see the legs work independently, but it's not just up and down. It's how much they turn relative to the upper body. Same here in the moguls, it's like a short turn. You can see his, his legs are pointing from side to side. Here, again, the stable upper body comes from the ability to turn the legs. Okay. In slow motion. So now, now the body turns more because it goes across the hill.
the reason he can turn is because his balance point at crossover is just at the back of the arch. So again, you can see from the side, you can see the body facing down the hill and you can see the, the legs turn, see the tops of the skis one way, bottoms of the skis the other way. Nice, nice slow motion segment. Bigger turn, still with the same motion. Here, just a little, little quick turns, right? So it happens all at once, right at the end, there, there. Okay, and that's all I had to talk about. I don't know if there's any questions. Well, uh, I think it's a Q and A time now. I do found some questions in the box, but I would recommend your our, our participants altogether. It's just a limited amount, so we can just uh, turn on our camera and uh, you know talk. So that we can feel that we are still with each other, right? So for everyone of you here on the computer, on the right top corner, you can switch into the gallery view so that we can see everybody. Now I can see uh, V, Lulu, uh, Ski Cat, Steven. Yeah. Hi everybody, welcome. Hi Lulu, hi Steven. Hi Ski Cat, how are you? And I also noticed that there are some guests. There's uh, Michael Lu from Toronto and uh, Barkley, uh, Aman, and uh, Bing, Leo, the young man. I would encourage you to turn on the camera so that we can see each other. And when you want to ask a question, turn on your microphone. Otherwise, we are competing uh, to speak. That's not going to be nice. Hi, everybody. Hello. Okay. Hello. Hi, Otto. Hi. So, Lulu, I saw you got the first question. Why don't you just bring it to Otto? Uh, I'll, start, uh, I'll start with a bigger one. Uh, since, um, am I heard? Yeah. Okay. So um, now we we are at the second one of this series of the seminars. I just wonder if we have a, a line or connection between the topics that uh, uh, will be chosen. Uh, I'll talk about the balance or uh, some alignment, body alignment. Uh, on the first one, and uh, today is a turning with the lower body, I guess next time uh, we'll touch the edging balance thing. Just, just a guess. Sure. What's you know, we, can, we can talk whatever you want to, we, we can, you know, uh, we can, we can talk about edging if you want next time, or we can get into specifics on, uh, on, on different 
turn shapes or terrain or uh, anything. It's easy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'll, I'll start a second one. Um, it's quite specific. Um, when we are told or taught about advanced skiing, we firstly introduce, okay, you're going to engage your edge grip early and high in the curve or in the turn. And how is this related to our turning with the lower body? Because I got a question from my student that the, they asked, once I engage the edge, I, how can I turn my legs to turn, to turn my it, skis? So. Ex ex exactly. And that's exactly what I said earlier in this. If you add too much edging early in the turn, you cannot turn the skis. And that is often a big problem with uh, skiers. Um, expert skiers, and we're talking, uh, you know, Japanese technical skiers or World Cup skiers, when they have a lot of speed uh, and they start moving inside, you know, what, what, we, what I was showing you in an intermediate turn that takes half the turn to do an in intermediate turn takes, you know, a 10th of the turn at, at higher end, but often there is, um, there, there is this trend about with people that I, you know, I just think out there right now, it's about early edging, right? Early edging cannot, uh, you don't need early edging. I'm just going to say you don't need early edging. Why? And and that's that's a big question. Everybody gets, oh, I got an early edge. I got an early edge. I got to roll, you know, and I end up rolling the knee in, and I end up rotating, and then I can't change the turn shape, and I can't link my turns properly. Um, the top part of the turn, uh, you know, if I go back to physics, physics and and the science of skiing, when when I showed you my video there. Uh, and Richie's at the, the crossover, the skis are flat. The body's facing in the direction of travel. If I was to release a ball at that same time in that same tra trajectory, what would that ball do on that slope? That ball would, that ball would make a, an arc, right, and, and go down the hill. And that is what we're going to do anyways. If I release... If I cross over, my skis are flat, I'm facing the direction of travel, whether it's a little or a lot, with forward speed, over time, my skis are going to make that arc going down the hill. I don't need a lot of edging to do that. Very simply, gra gravity is on my side, right? So we, we get, um, in today's world, so hung up about early edging that it has caused us a whole host of problems. Um, primarily rotation, right? And so when, and when I talk about rotation, that's when the, the upper body leads the turning effort. And you can look at a large majority of skiers on the hill today, and it doesn't matter what country they're in. And they lead, they try to get early edging and they lead the turn with the upper body, okay? The most, you know, people say, oh, well, that's the most important part of the turn. It is an important part of the turn. Skiing is continuous, so there is no most important part. But it's an opportunity to gain balance, to get yourself in an athletic stance, start the turning process. I cannot edge. I cannot edge properly until I have separation. And even in Richie's, if you go back and you slow Richie's video down, and I showed you he drives his knee in early. He got caught on a couple of times there. He got caught where he drove the knee in, he got too much edge, and the ski starts to, to run straight a little bit. And then he did, did a little quick little step to, to create the steering angle. Okay? It's imperceptible. It's, it's almost imperceptible. But we, we, ha we have gravity. That's where we're, we're gaining speed as we release the turn. The forces are light there. There are not a lot of forces on us because we've released the turn and, and essentially it's like going off a diving board, we're falling. At the end of the turn, at the end of the turn, that's where the forces are the greatest. 
So again, I've got, I've had gravity pulling me. And as it's pulled me over time, I've created uh, momentum. My mass has momentum, which is a lot of force going forward. And now when I'm finishing my turn, I, the, the reason I'm making a turn is to manage my speed, right? And sometimes it's to control the speed. Manage the speed is to take it into the next turn. And, and when we ski a short turn or like a medium-sized turn, it's, it's to, to kind of maintain an even speed. When I'm in bumps or on a steep turn, I turn the skis a lot. And I do that at the end of the turn to control the speed or, or to slow myself down. And that's where the forces are the greatest. And that's where uh, I've got to be well balanced and I've got to create that edge angle and I've got to hold myself, right? But if, if, if I move my upper body first, as we see a lot of skiers do, and, I, and then I roll the knee in, uh, I'm too far forward and the ski breaks away and I can't manage it smoothly and I can't link my turn smoothly. So um, I, know, I know a lot of people talk about early edge, but I talk about early arc an early arc comes naturally if I'm well balanced and I release the turn and I, and I flatten my skis and I just guide my skis into the fall line, right? Does that answer your question? Or confuse you more? So, um, I, uh, yeah, pretty much. I, I, I can try to describe what my understanding is. Just correct me if I'm wrong. So, what I understand many years ago, I, I heard from Jim Morrison that the, uh, when I ask, when do you turn your uh, legs or lower body? His answer is, I turn my legs all through the turn. So can I understand that the, for edging, to start a turn, you can have a bit edging or even flat. And as the turn progress, the ed ski edging is progressing too. So as my legs keep turning, it can always turn because the edge is not locked up. Yeah. Once well, I reach a point, oh, sorry, once I reach that point that the, I feel my ski edge is locked up. When, uh, when you do- um, It's in a turn, I yeah. should start to cross over. Would that be everything, everything, is pro everything is progressive in, in skiing. So when the forces are greatest, I have to balance against those forces. So I'm going to incline the most and I'm going to angulate the most. Um, probably have my skis turn the most at the end of the turn when the forces are the greatest. It's like, it's like a hockey stop. I, I, I turn my legs and then I start to edge uh, a lot and then, and then I, I release them. But in a turn, I start with inclination, right? And then angulation, inclination, angulation. And I never try to get a lot early. Um, you know, one, one thing I want, I want to be careful of is I, I talk, I talk um, skiing based on, you know, if I look at the manual science and experience and I try to prove it with videos, right? But what I want to make sure that we don't get into is that, you know, this course conductor said X. And how come you're saying why, Otto? Because I'm I'm not standing next to that course conductor on snow, and there's there's communication that occurs between you and them, and then me and them, and sometimes it gets lost. So I'm I'm not here to contradict uh, other course conductors. I'm here to just say, hey, this is what I see in skiing, and this is why I see it. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Okay. So when you when you say Jim Morrison said such and such. Uh, you know, it's not what he said. It's what you understood. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. All right. So, um, because otherwise as a professional, I get into a, a tit for tat without him being party to that conversation. And I just won't do that. What I, what I do talk about is uh, like I showed you, I should, you know, and in the next, next one, yeah, we'll talk about edging and how, how it develops. Right. And, and, you know, R Richie does use a little bit, uses a little bit of knee and in that soft snow and on ice, it probably works nice, but in bumps, he doesn't do it. And his longer turns, he doesn't do it. And <clears throat> none of us uh, ski perfectly. We all have, and this is, this is one of the things is with skiing, 
we all have different body shapes, right? Some of us are shorter and some of us are longer. Some of us have uh, long back, backs, right? Ski cat and short legs, right? Ski cat, Thank you. So a nice long torso, right? Shorter legs, okay, right? So some of us are heavier, some of us are, are lighter and um, because of our physiology, sometimes we make slightly different moves and some of us have different athletic talents. So we can do those things. Okay. Okay. So I'll, I'll hand over the mic, microphone to others. Okay. <clears throat> I think it's my turn. And uh, I'm very happy to, to be here. And uh, first, I, I want to thank to uh, Lane and uh, thank you, Otto. Uh, maybe it, it seems I, I'm the only one from China. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 it's different from China. So uh, I have two very easy questions. Uh, the first one is when we uh, watched your video just now. Uh, at the beginning of the turn, it seems a little bit back uh, in your video. It seems a little bit, a little bit back. Just as my opinion, a little bit back. So could you uh, explain for that? And uh, the second question is um, when I am skiing, uh, especially uh, in the short turns, always my my ski tips uh, are together. Very, very narrow, very closer, my ski tips. Not not every turn, but sometimes. So I want to solve that problem. I, I, I think it's a problem. So I don't know. I, I want to try to, uh, I want to uh, keep my balance and uh, I want to send, uh, stand uh, in the middle. But this problem is always happen. So that's my question, two questions. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, I am uh, often at crossover a, a little bit back compared to most people. And I, again, uh, I, you know, is it is it right? No, I sometimes I try to move a little bit more more forward, right? Um, but what I try to demonstrate is most people are too forward. Oh, okay. and, and and that was that was kind of the last lecture is a lot of people push on the front of the boots and then and then when you get when you get on the front of the ski too much right the the body the upper body starts to rotate a little bit and then we can't separate upper and lower body okay um am i i'm not very far back just you know you know just uh a centimeter or so yeah and it basically it comes from rounding the back when i think about it like any like anybody else um uh you know richie berger works on things if you if you watch in some of his past videos every uh third turn um, on his left side he gets too far forward right and then it kicks him upward right so we we constantly each one of us and you you've got it we have problems that we work on even level fours and that's why sometimes if you watch if you watch videos like you did there and you see something then the correction to me is auto hey a crossover bend in the waist to move forward a little bit okay, okay. And, and and you show me how to do it that's that's how you teach right and when you go to a level four course uh you know you'll find um some skiers that, you know, will barely meet the level three standard because they've given up for a while ago, but you'll meet some, some really good skiers like myself and you'll give them a, a, a little coaching tip. You know, when I go out and I train here, sometimes I take a group of level fours that have, have been around for many years and we work on our skiing together, right? Um, so it's not a problem. And I think that's something you've, you've got to get look at, looked at and that's your eye. Now with your, you know, ski cat, without me actually seeing your skiing, it's hard to say, but I think that, you know, are you talking about your ski tips like this or like this when you ski? Like this. Right? Like, like this. So side by side. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. my ski tips will like this. 
Oh, they, they cross yeah. over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's just something you're going to have to work on. Like, I think if you, if you sit in a chair or lay on your back and you start working your legs, you know, I, I think, the, you know, I've, I've seen you do that uh, a lot, a lot, bef- you know, um, when I've seen you ski. Uh, from, you know, I can, can remember skiing the bumps uh, I went along and riding the chairlift and, and I see you've done that and same in short turns. I think you try a lot to keep your thighs really close together. Mm-hmm. Right. So you, 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 you take the adductor muscles and you push them together. And what happens is that changes the alignment of your legs. And so that your toes start to point in a little bit. So my suggestion would, would be to try to, to release the adductors and just have the legs aligned straightly. Cause I think, I think it starts up higher in, in your legs. Okay. Thanks, Autumn. You're welcome. <laughs> so, um, maybe, may I suggest that maybe next time, uh, Ski Cat, you, you send me your video and we can have uh, Otto to comment on it with a video. That will be more helpful. Yeah, I think Otto knows that problem. He always um, watch, me, watch my skiing in one long. Yeah. yeah. Uh, beginning, at the beginning of this, this season, we ski together one day. <laughs> yeah. I, I follow Otto, yeah. So I think he knows it. Yeah, so, so, you know, some, sometimes like your, your thighs go, go together versus just, you know, you, you push your, your thighs together. Just let them, let them go because when, they, when, they, when you do, do take your thighs and you can, you can try standing there, if I, if I try to push my knees together, my toes tend to, to rotate inward a little bit. So just relax the thighs and have them go out a little bit. You know, and, and some of that I think is just when you're skiing, ski cat, relax the inside leg a little bit. There's going to be tension on the outside leg. I don't want to turn it in. I just want to hold against the forces naturally and just let my other leg float close by. And if you're aware of it, I mean, that's, that's, um, that's the greatest thing. Often when, when you're a, a good skier, as a lot of you now are in this group, you're starting to become good skiers. Change, change takes longer. Right. You know, ski cat, you're, you're a very strong skier. You know, you're getting close. I think in a lot of cases to the level four standard with your skiing change doesn't come easy. It, it, it takes awareness first, awareness of your body, awareness of feelings. And then, and then you can slowly start to make changes. You know, you've got to, and then once you, you feel that change in a non-stressful environment, then you start to stress yourself, you know, whether it's, bigger moguls or steeper moguls or faster moguls or short turns or short turns down forehead, you know, at a high performance. If you do short turns slowly, then not a problem. Thank you. <laughs> okay. okay. I saw Stephen recently. Then. Hello. Hi. Can Hi, I? Hi. How are you today? Good. Good to see you. Yeah. Good to see you too. Um, so I have a question about the beginning of the turn. Uh, I do understand what you said about early edging is overemphasized because, you know, to my understanding, it's very easy. You have to have a, a flat ski to turn them, right? And then you yeah. gradually edging to steer them. But a lot of videos, including my own videos, when I try to see, because this, this, okay, first of all, this is what I heard before. When you work from your level one to level four, there's a good sign uh, to tell you becoming a better skier that you can push the snow away closer to the top of the turn. So this is related to my question. When I see a lot of people, a lot of good skiers skiing on their videos, in their videos, I can see they have their ski edge a lot earlier than I thought almost at the top of the turn. So that confused me a little bit. Do they have like a, a just a fraction of second when they have a flat ski or it just, you know, combine and then they just emphasize edging more than turning? Well, they, they have to have a flat ski to cross from one turn to the next for sure. Right. Uh, and the, the body crosses over and yeah, there's, you know, but the first thing is you've got to create a steering angle. 
right? So you've got to start turning the ski before you put it on edge. And, and uh, it happens very fast. You know, if you, if you think of a turn being a second or two seconds long and then the top part of the turn being just, you know, a small portion of that, it happens. But that, that creation of a steering angle, getting the ski turned across where you're, you're going to go, you know, when I, when I show it on the hill or I show it now, I, I show um, a lot. But really, it's just a small amount. On a big turn, it's a small amount. I, on, a, on a shorter turn, you know, with Richie's, you see, see it happen a lot. And, and, and this is, again, I go back to where Richie, in, in those short, short turn combinations, sometimes early on in the slow motion, on his left side, he turned his knee in, and he didn't create the steering angle. He got the edging first. And then the ski starts to track first, and then he has to step to create the steering angle, okay? That's what happens a lot. Now... Um, I, I, I think you want to, uh, not necessarily get a lot of edging and the edging comes from inclination, Stephen. It doesn't come from angulation. It doesn't come from driving the knee in early, right? That puts it at too much edge. And then the self steering effect, the ski doesn't work. The ski has to be turned a little bit to have some self steering act. Then we, then we add progressive of the edging and the edging comes on not only through angulation but it comes on because the slope starts to fall away from us so naturally we get a bigger edge angle when the, when the slope is and the steeper the slope the more of the edge angle we're going to achieve um you know I, I think that uh you know sometimes we look at and i'm going to use this analogy we want we want uh the pure car if we want to have a, a car turned from top to bottom but carving is an outcome, right? So that's a result of doing things right. If I go to carving first, I don't necessarily, I, I haven't necessarily made the steps or the movements that will get me to carving, okay? So um, what I wanna do is I, I, skiing is a balanced sport, right? Everything we do, moguls, snow conditions, ice, slipperiness, slush, it's throwing off, off, off us off balance. So that's why I talked about dynamic balance before. Dy dynamic balance means I'm making a lot of movements to stay in balance. Fore, aft, side to side, making these adjustments and turning my legs is the second one. If I'm in balance, I can turn my legs a little bit or a lot, depending upon the situation. Then I can edge. And when I edge, and I do those in a coordinated fashion, then I can get that outcome of carving. And I can carve. Car carving is relative to a number of things, relative to speed, uh, slope you're on, and snow conditions. Uh, and it's also um, depending upon the side cut of your ski. So if I have a, a 10 or 12 meter slalom ski, I can carve at slower speeds, right? in a in a medium sized turn or a shorter medium sized turn if i have a world cup 25 meter radius ski a 30 meter radius ski i cannot carve in short turns or medium turns i'm going to have to carve in big turns and i'm going to have to go fast to do that so that i can bend the ski as well so it's it's relative i can't carve short turns well i because i in a short turn i'm turning the ski more I, am I going to get a lot of edge? Sure. Right. Even when I'm carving, the ski has a, a is turned a little bit, right? Or um, the turning is led by my lower body, and it's led by my lower body because the shape of the ski or the ski design is helping me turn my lower body. I said that at the beginning, right? So I don't want I don't want to turn my upper body because then I'm not as efficient. That I can't. I'm not facing the direction of travel when I cross over or when I, when I flatten. And I think that, that a lot of people right, um, focus on, oh, I want to get edging, I want to get early edging versus lining up balance and turning with the lower body first. And if, if I look at, um, if, we, if we look at edging, and, and this is for, for Stephen and this is for... Uh, Lulu too, right? And I look at, and this is 6.6 .6, um, in the manual, 
right here. It says uh, upper and lower body separation. Okay, this is this is uh, the the first section. Upper and lower body separation uh, allows for angulation uh, to provide grip. Okay, or to provide carving. You could you could put you know grip grip as carving in there as well. But the key phrase is upper and lower body separation. Okay, how do I get upper and lower body separation? I turn the skis. Right? I turn my legs, and, or I use ski design to do that. So that's that's part of it. And I think that the uh, the manual has kind of laid things out there pretty well, except except for kind of the pivot point in the leg access, which comes on the balance. That that pivot point allows me to turn my legs. Did that answer that, Stephen? Uh, yes, that's the answer to my question. Um, so it actually. I had a, another question to ask, but you kind of answered the second question as well. I was um, I was a little bit confused about should you have your base of support moves around of your center of mass or your center of mass moves around the base of support? Both uh, move together, right? So if I push my feet forward, okay. And if, let's, let's say I'm just standing there on my skis on snow, on a flat piece of snow, and I push my skis forward and I leave my center of mass where it is, then I'm going to be off balance. But I may move my body forward, my hips back and my feet forward to retain balance, right? But, you know, the, the body is like a, an accordion. It's got, got many joints to bend. And so as I move, this happens to stay in balance. And that's, that's part of the dynamic balance we talked about last time is that that I, I, I want to move, I want to move my feet based on the friction that comes from it. If, if I hit a lot of wet snow, wet powder snow, there's a lot of friction. So I'm going to have to anticipate that. And this is where experience plays a big part is because the more you've experienced the different snow conditions, the more you can adjust your balance to be in the right spot so that I can turn my legs. And then how much do I turn my legs in that snow condition? What kind of turn shape is the best on that terrain and that, that can, snow conditions? Okay, so I guess um, um, balance is actually more important than turning, right? You sometimes either adjust your center of mass or move your base of support around it to uh, maintain balance all the time, am I correct? Yeah, you know, for, um, in, in my opinion, the better balanced somebody is, the better they can make the movements that they need to make to turn. The more you refine balance, the less you're out of balance, the more you're in balance, um, the more you can make movements, right? And so it's a it's a hand eye hand foot coordination, right? Okay, so if, you know we see a skier that's the hand goes up and they're way off balance. Well, they can't. They're straight and their 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 body isn't functioning well and they can't turn their legs. Yeah, I always go, I always go to balance first. Uh, okay, I just have one last question. This is more of a personal question. There's a lot of gears on sale right now online. I'm just thinking whether <laughs> I should get a pair of GS skis if I want to work towards my level four. Well, uh, my recommendation and what I've seen over the years is, um, you don't, you know, we, we kind of talk about skis now in, in uh, the meter in the radiuses that um, they ski. And there is a, there is a GS race on course. Now that, that GS race is probably a, uh, you know, World Cup GSs are about a 25 meter. Ours end up probably being about 22, 23 meters. Not that they're designed that way, but it just to try and manage the speed a little bit. But we are not governed by the same rules <clears throat> that fist racers are. So you can use whatever ski you want. And my recommendation is to <clears throat> have one ski that you're comfortable with that you can use in all situations. And so that you can take it from 
the moguls to carving, you know, to expert parallel, to intermediate parallel, to short turns, to corridor, to race. Because I've seen too many, too many level four candidates come up with a, you know, even an 18 or a 21 or 25 meter ski and they don't ski on it and they're not comfortable with it. it it's a considerably different ski to use and to, to pull it out to ski two runs on, you know, um, and to only ski on it a couple of times in a year isn't to your benefit. I, I ski on a, you know, 15 and a half meter radius ski. And I use that, um, you know, I did, a, I did the peak to valley and that's the ski I use. All right. And I ski moguls and I, that's the one ski that I love, you know, I can ski in bumps and I can ski anywhere and, and it does everything for me. Um, so that's what I would recommend. I would recommend uh, that you, you kind of pick a ski that you're comfortable with. And typically for, um, you know, uh, bigger people, you know, if you're looking at weight, probably uh, 160, 150, 160 pounds up, you're looking at a, at a 14 to 18 meter ski. I think, I think, I think 15, 16 is probably 15, 16, 17 is probably the best. And then if you're, if you're a little lighter or you're female, you might be looking at the low end would be 13, 13 to 15. Yeah. Some, sometimes 12, but I think for females, you're probably looking at uh, 13, 14 meter ski is probably a nice, nice comfortable ski to ski on. Right. And somewhere, you know, the, the, the waist, the waist of the ski is probably uh, 68 to 74 millimeters in that range. Right. So it's not, you know, that's where, that's where I would go. One ski that does it all, you know, I have a number of pairs of skis in there. They're all right now. They're all 14 and a half to 15 and a half meters. And some of them are wider underfoot and some of them are narrower, but they're all in that same range. And I just find that that's a, I can take those skis and I can ski in powder. I can ski in bumps. I can carve, I can race. I can do short turns with them. So that's what I would do, Stephen. Thank you very much. Looking forward to ski with you soon. Yeah. Hopefully the mountain will be open in November, earlier this year. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm just a, a little bit cautious of time. We talked about 40 to 45 minutes. Now it's almost no, 18 minutes. What? So, <laughs> <laughs> so do we still have a chance to take another one or two questions? <sighs> I just I need time to, no, I just, time to digest all the topic you, you talk to us, you know, I need time to digest my, my food and your uh, words, you know. It's, you know, the more you, the more you talk about this stuff, the more you listen to it, then it becomes familiar, right? That's, that's, that's all it is, is just time and, and talking about it. Yeah. You know, some things, you know, I read the manual and, and I, ah, there's new things or it just makes me think about it a little bit differently. It's the same things, right? But I think there's layers and we, we add, we add one on top of the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I need to familiar with all those things. Hopefully you, you guys grab us back. You know, I almost threw out this manual. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Otto. Nice to see you. Yeah, uh, nice. Guys. Yeah, good to see you, Barkley. Where's Barkley? We'll all have to catch. We we'll all have to catch up one day. So, uh, yeah, it's a really good time we had together and. Uh, Otto, so we may sh should discuss, you know, what will be the next session. 
What do you want? What do you, what do you want to talk about? Maybe we have some videos from the panelists and uh, they send the video and you just comment on theirs and provide some suggestions. Would that make sense for you? <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah. And also I got a suggestion from Vivi. Vivi, you are... Edging. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, um, if, yeah, for sure, if you're going to send me some videos, send them to my email, I think. I'm, I'm good with WeChat, but I'm not really good. And not that. <laughs> getting, getting them from, from WeChat on my phone to my computer, that's where I need an IT expert. I spend most of my time skiing, not on IT. But if you send it to my email, uh, Vivi's, or, um, Lynn, you have my email, right? You can share it. Yeah. Yeah. How about, may I make a recommendation? It'll be a YouTube link. Yeah. Very easy. So may I make a recommendation that uh, I can collect the video, I upload it on the YouTube, and I share, also I share with your YouTube link. And you can yeah, yeah, that works, that's great. Yeah, and then I just, I need to look at it before, mm. so that I can um, see whatever he's doing. So I will be acting as your agent. <laughs> <laughs> Vivi, yeah. I think you got, you got a request, right? You have your recommendation. You are on spot. Yeah, I, I want to continue this topic. The, the, the deeper layer, you know, they, we have got two layers <laughs> <laughs> with this priority. Yeah. Yeah. So the next one would be uh, this. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about uh, edging. Right, carving. Edging and steering, and yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, sorry, this is a little. Uh, well, when I mentioned edging and not necessarily the carving part, it's just, uh, uh, it can be anything like edging. How, how do you feel the edging in, in intermediate parallel or even bombs? So it's, Pretty versatile question. Yeah, yeah. Not oh, yeah. Really just lock it up and uh, ride on. Yeah, for sure. That's the way I talk about it. But at the end of the day, we love carving, right? We just want to do it the right way. So, you know, nothing like, you know, carving down a beautiful run. First thing in the morning, corduroy, sunshine. Okay. I have my video. It's a YouTube link. I sent a link and uh, she can go to you. Okay. Just so volunteer you know, it. Because yeah. I might be the only one that uh, you've never seen skiing. You've seen everybody else. So I have to volunteer that. Uh, I, hope, I hope you're amazing. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh. So... Yeah, let, Otto, let's connect to discuss what the next session will be. And thank you for all the guests here and your, your participation would definitely help. And, uh, you know, in our WeChat group, feel free to offer any, uh, you know, uh, suggestions for the way going forward. And, uh, yeah, I think most, yeah, we, I just want to, um, maybe on behalf of all the guests, Otto, thank you so much. We really appreciate that. It's valuable time for everyone of us. Okay. Yeah. All thank right. You. Thank you. Thank you. You're good. <laughs> thank you, Otto. Glad, glad. Thank Thanks. You. Good, yeah. good conversation. Thank yeah. you, Otto. Thank all you right. so much. Yeah. Have a good, have a good, have a good day. Bye, have Barclay, CV. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Thank you, Bye. Otto. Steven, Ski Bye, bye, bye. All right. Bye, bye. Lulu, everybody. All right. <laughs> Have a good day. You too. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.